let me now introduce you to the concept of negative remainders let us start with a simple example let's say if i have 14 multiplied by 15 and if i'll divide this with an 8 and we are asked to find the remainder in this case so the simple and the foremost approach will be i'll divide individual numbers with 8 try to find the remainders and then multiply them so in the first case if i'll divide 14 with 8 my remainder will be 6 because uh, i'll reach 8 because for reaching 14 i'll reach 8 i'll reach 8 first and this difference will be 6 here so this 6 positive 6 will act, act as my remainder so 6 multiplied by and now i'll divide 15 with an 8 15 with an 8 so 15 is somewhat here again i'll reach 8 again i'll reach 8 but in order to reach 15 i'm still lacking a 7 so in this case 7 will be my remainder now again i'll divide this with an 8 because 7 6 is 42 still it is greater than 8 so this won't be my remainder my remainder will be this will be equal to 42 divided by 8 let's find the remainder now so 8 5 is 40 i still need 2 to reach 42 so the remainder will be Two in this case. Now let us try to solve the same problem using the concept of negative remainders. Now, by definition, mathematically we know that remainders are always positive. These remainders are always positive. Even if we divide a negative number with a positive number, still the remainder will be positive. For example, let's say if I have negative twenty-eight. and i need to divide this with a 5 so there are two approaches there are two ways to think this now either i can reach negative 25 let's see we have negative 25 here and let's say this is negative 30 now negative 28 will lie somewhere here this will be my negative 28 so what i can do i can either reach negative 25 so i need Negative three more. If I add negative three more into this, I'll reach negative twenty-eight. So negative three can act as my remainder. Or, or what I can do, I can reach thirty. I can reach thirty and subtract a two from this by adding a two. If I'll add two to this, I'll move towards right and I'll reach negative twenty-eight. So this. positive 2 can act as my remainder now i know that since by formal definition remainders are always positive so i will take i will consider positive 2 as my remainder and not negative 3 but there is a very interesting phenomenon about negative remainders especially in the case of finding remainders if let us say that negative remainders are also allowed then it will help us in a lot much easier way how let us say now let us consider same example that we have written down here 14 times 15 divided by 8 now the first step is to find the remainders individually i am calculating the remainder here so i'll write it down here 14 divided by 8 remainder multiplied by 15 divided by 8 and the remainder now now by 14 by 8 i can think of it as let's say this is my 14 and this is my 0 either i can reach 8 first and i lack 6 more so i can add 6 to this or by understanding the concept of negative remainders what i can do i can move forward reach 16 i can take one more step reach 16 and then subtract 2 from this subtract 2 from this to come back to 14 so if negative remainders are allowed i can think of negative 2 as my remainder instead of positive 6 so this remainder i can consider as negative 2 similarly for 15 i can reach 16 subtract a 1 from it to get a remainder in this case so this will give me negative 1 as the remainder so negative 2 multiplied by negative 1 will finally and easily give me 2 as my remainder which i can directly find in a single step here if i am considering negative remainders which i took a lot more time to find in the first way of doing it similarly let us try one more simple problem let's say let's say that i have some 12 multiplied by 14 and i need to divide this with 13 to find the remainder now using the concept of negative remainders what i can do i can split this up 12 divided by 13 remainder multiplied by 14 divided by 13 as my remainder 
When 12 is divided by 13, I know that either it can be 12 as my remainder because 12 is lesser than 13. So 12 will directly act as a remainder or I can think of it as I'll reach 13 and subtract 1 from this to reach 12. So I can consider negative 1 as my remainder in this case. For 14 divided by 13, the remainder is simple as 1. So this will give me 1 as my remainder. Negative 1 multiplied by 1 will give me negative 1 as my remainder. Now whenever I'm answering, I cannot accept negative as my remainder. This is just for the sake of making my process easier. Whenever there is my final answer concerned, I have, I have to write my remainder. I have to make my remainder always positive. So negative one remainder means that I have reached 13, but I have to get back by one unit that I have to subtract one unit from that. So in this case, this will be 13 minus one, that is 12 will be my final remainder.